Amanda here with Homeschool and Life, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about planning and credits. Um, I have been homeschooling from the beginning. I think we probably got a video about that, and so I am entering the season where it's time to start keeping credits now. Um, but I'm going to talk specifically about keep homeschooling and credits for the NCAA eligibility requirements. Now, my I've got kids that are going into the ninth grade who do play sports. Do I know that they are going to get to play college sports? No, I don't know that. But I do know that that is their current goals and they are working towards those goals. And so as a homeschool um, mom, teacher, parent, educator, administrator, counselor, registrar, all the things, it is, it is our responsibility of parents if our kids are wanting to get those goals to make sure we're doing everything right on our end to not have them run into any kind of hiccups or any problems towards the towards the end when that time comes. Um, thankfully for us, we have a, a Division II college actually pretty close to our town where we know several people who have been able to ask questions to um, just because they do have some homeschool kids playing on some of their sports teams like just to double check me to make sure that I have um, read the rules correctly and everything else. So the NCAA has an excellent, excellent website for um, homeschool students. There is actually a homeschool toolkit on the NCAA website that like very much walks you through everything that you need to do. And so I started that process this summer um, just because, again, at the end, I want to make sure that I have everything done correctly on my end that does not cause any kind of problems or hiccups for my children. So, if you go, I guess I've got got a lot of papers here to show you, but it's stuff that was, um, it'll be very helpful if you have any kind of child that is interested in possibly playing co the college level sports at all. So, on the NCAA website, you're going to find um, on the homeschool toolkit, there's going to be Division I requirements and Division II requirements. And those are going to be where it lists, you know, like you need um, how, how many maths you need, how many sciences you need, how many social sciences you need, and things like that. And so, it's pretty straightforward. And so, and I'll leave the links to all of that stuff in this video. But the number one thing you're going to want is there is an eligibility core course worksheet. These, and it's downloadable from the NCAA website. And these are the things that you need to keep up with as a parent right now. And so I've already started this because I did issue some credits um, last year as an eighth grader because we did do Shorman Math, which is, you know, they do their Algebra 1 and Geometry as a half credit. And then you do the Algebra 2 in the Geometry and you get the full um, algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry in just th two years. So it's pretty awesome. Um, so I was able to issue that. So on this core course worksheet, what it's going to do is it's going to go through like, what is the course? What is it? And then you have to have a course description. So obviously with Shorman Math, I went and I just copied and pasted their course description. Um, we did not grass, and that's a 10th, through, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade American history course. I just copied and pasted their description of the course. And so you're going to want to keep up with this. If you waited until the end of, like, until your child was ready to graduate, this would be, like, obnoxious to do. So I'm going to do, I did it at the end of this year. At the end of every school year, I've got this saved on my computer. I'm just going to go in, fill it all out, and then upload it to my Google Docs so that I have it um, ready. And so not only do you have to do the course description, you also have to do the course content, the goals, and the outline, you know, very and then the types of assessments used. So like this one is obviously 100 daily lessons, 28 weekly quizzes, and four quarterly exams. And so I've got all this. And with, obviously with Shorman Math, um, it's they do the grades for you, so that's very easy to submit. So like if you were having them take a, um, like we're doing apology and biology this year, I am going to save all of her tests and things like that. And I'm just going to start keeping a notebook, um, which we do homeschool notebooks. I'm sure we have a video on that where my kids put all of their um, good work for the year in a notebook and we show everybody at the end of the year. But now I'm switching it to where I'm going to have, well, I guess it's essentially the same thing. I'm going to actually start saving some work. Um, I don't think anybody will ever truly ask for it, but 
because they're gonna rely so much on these core course worksheets. I, I'm going to keep the tests and I'm gonna keep like for our um, literature, the, the finished papers. I'm not gonna keep all the little little things that we do, but you have to have some sort of like grading system because you have to submit grades. So core course worksheets, that's the number one thing that you need to do and know what you're doing. So what I did was I went and wrote down the core course requirements for um, Division One and Division Two, and this is kind of my chicken scratch. It's I've got it written in in pencil, um, like it's just I've got a box, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and I wrote it down in pencil, and I just penciled in like what um, what I'm planning for her to do each year kind of the fun of planning homeschools like out the window when they get to this age because it's if they have if they're wanting to go to college or if they're wanting to play sports or if they're wanting to do something like a you really need to follow the guidelines of everything that needs to be done so I wrote it in pencil so that I could change it around and then I've cross-referenced it with the NCAA requirements to make sure that I am getting everything that needs to be done so this was actually um, probably my heaviest planning year that I have ever done before. And I've also cross-referenced this with the dual enrollment options. Um, we also, we have, besides the NCAA school I was telling you about, we have a local community college close by as well that um, offers dual enrollment. So I have all of that listed too so that we'll take the dual enrollment and I'll still fill out the core core course worksheets for that. Um, another thing that I did was I went to um, Arkansas, we live in Arkansas, and I went to their, and I looked up their high school requirements for the state, and then I looked up the high school requirements for our local high school. No, we don't necessarily attend the local high school. Um, we do play public sports there, we, but we do our homeschool education. But I just wanted to go ahead and write it all down. So I made another form. Again, this was a heavy planning year for me um, where I put down what the course is, um, what we actually like took for the course. Like right now, I put English 9. We're going to do BJU, writing and grammar, and I'm also going to mix in some IW and some literature. So like this is just for me to write down the grade we took, took it in, the year we took it in, the credit and the grade. This is just an overall form for me to continue to look at every year as I'm planning um, for the Arkansas requirements. And you know, obviously there's like a speech on here, um, a computer science, fine arts, health safety, you know, just to make sure that I am covering all of my bases. Um, I, I don't have necessarily any plans to send my kids to the public school. We are, um, I love homeschooling. I love what we're doing. I. I could go on and on and on about the benefits of it, but I did notice that um, as going back to this page, my daughter will be taking, and eventually my son, a lot of times their high school is going to end up being primarily dual enrollment, which they can take through the high school, and so that's one reason I followed our, high school, our local high school stuff is just in case, because they do play public schools, if they end up wanting to do all the dual enrollment through the school. I'm not saying they are because they can do it as homeschoolers, but I'm not saying they're not. Again, the same thing with the NCAA stuff. I am just making sure that I am organized, I'm covering my basis, and I know what's going on um, so that I, they can do whatever they want. Like, uh, that sounds bad. They, do they will have the resources and the options and the choices to um, do things because we did it right on our end. And um, there's also, if you live, well, if you live in Arkansas, well, I won't even say that because you might not live here in Arkansas. I'll just switch, take that sticky note off and just share this. Okay, this is my transcript that I have made for my children. So, it's pretty, um, you probably can't really see it, but it's very organized. And it has their classes and grades and what credit they're getting for. Like, um, last year we got the one and a half credit from the Shorman Math. So, um, just... Just saying, if you want to be organized, you need to, for the NCAA stuff, you need to go and find out the requirements, download this core course worksheet, keep up with it at the end of every single year. You're going to need an official um, transcript that looked, that you've kept up with, and you're going to need to save some of their work just in case anybody ever wants to look at it. 
I don't think they will, but just in case. And then you will have to obviously take your ACT, SAT, and those kind of assessment type of tests. So that's, um, that's kind of how I've got it organized. I've got it, like I said, my overall planning sheet that I am erasing and moving things around. I've got the NCAA requirements, and then I've got my Arkansas requirements for what they need. And um, I feel feel pretty good about the overall planning for the next four years and the electives we are taking. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. If you um, this was helpful, like this video, subscribe to our channel. And thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this was helpful.